now let's look for a few minutes at the Liberal Hall of Shame for 2015 to 2021. Liberal MP William Amos was caught twice on House Zoom proceedings in indecent possessions. Liberal MP Yasmin Rat. Anzi was wrongfully employing her sister with taxpayers' dollars and deliberately hiding this information from Canadians. Liberal MP Ramesh Sangha was removed from the Liberal caucus in January of 2021 after he accused multiple other Liberal MPs of supporting the Khalistani movement. Liberal MP Darshan Singh Kang had to leave the Liberal caucus in 2015 over accusations of sexual harassment. Liberal MP Nicola Di Lorio didn't show up for work for a year after he announced his resignation in 2018. Then the public found out, oh, he actually didn't resign. He still collected his salary as an MP, even if he was working full-time in a law firm in Montreal. To this day, to this, day this situation has never been clearly explained by Trudeau and the Liberals. Liberal MP Raj Graywall admitted he racked up millions of dollars in debts paying casino blackjack and ended up resigning from the Liberal caucus in 2018 after the news came to light. Following an RCMP investigation, but after suddenly announcing he had paid off his seven-figure debts, he stayed on as a member of parliament for the rest of the parliamentary session. You may recall that Mr. Graywall was already under investigation by the Federal Ethics Commissioner at the time and was later found guilty of being in violation of conflict of interest. Then there was Liberal MP Marwin Tabara. He was allowed to run against again for the Liberal Party in 2019 election, even though detailed allegations of sexual harassment had been made against him. After being arrested in April 2020, he remained in caucus for almost two months because the Prime Minister's office claimed they knew nothing about it. Took a newspaper article for the Liberals to kick him out of caucus. Then former Liberal MP Frank Bayliss signed one of those juicy sole source contracts with the Liberal government during the COVID epidemic. He received $237 million. Public health agency figures disclose that more than 90% of the 10,000 Bayless Medical Company ventilators it bought were never used in any clinic or any hospital. Sadly, these ethical lapses were even worse amongst cabinet ministers. Let me give you a few examples. As there are many, I will go in alphabetical order. Anita Anad's husband was the recipient of one of those juicy COVID contracts. Life Labs received tens of millions of dollars of COVID contracts. They sell test kits. Anita Anad's husband, John Knowlton, is a director of Life Labs. The Life Labs division has received multiple contracts worth millions since Anad was elected to the parliament in 2019. Navdeep Baines was industry minister and as such promised to crack down on big telcos who overcharge Canadians for internet and cell phone service. Guess what? He found a job at Rogers after leaving the government. The lobbying commissioner said she was frustrated at this, but liberals will always find loopholes that means more money for them. Then there was Bill Blair on several occasions, lied, meddled into the work of the RCMP regarding the worst mass killing in the history of... But I do not recall Prime Ministers Mulroney, Kretjan, Martin, Harper going to billionaire islands while they were in office. They spent most of their break weeks at Hurricane Lake. It makes sense for the Prime Minister to go there. It's close to Ottawa, already organized for security, a bit like Camp David in the U.S. The government decided to spend upwards of $11 million to renovate Harrington Lake, including moving the secondary house closer to the lake. But Justin Trudeau does not use Harrington Lake. Why? Senators will certainly remember Trudeau's performance at Queen Elizabeth's funeral, where he sang Queen songs at his posh hotel, where he had a $6,000 a night suite with a butler. Remember how Senator Gold was refusing to answer who was in the suite? Is it because of, it is because of a mistake by a staffer that we learned what we all suspected. It was Justin sleeping in the room. He spent $61,000 to attend a summit with entertainers to talk about, get this, how to end 
end poverty. Well, when you spend 1.3 million to talk about affordability, you should spend at least 60,000 talking about poverty. Trudeau's trip to India in 2018 was a complete disaster. He brought to India an Indian chef. Yes, they didn't have any of it. He invited a terrorist on the trip. He made a fool of himself by not only appearing in disguise, but trying to be more Bollywood than the Bollywood stars themselves. He single-handedly caused a rift between Canada and the most populous country on earth. One aspect of Justin Trudeau's legacy that we will need to thoroughly investigate is why has the Vancouver Chinese community funded his campaigns in Montreal for years? Also, there is a lot to learn about the dealings that went on at the Trudeau Foundation. This secretive and nebulous organization was granted $100 million by Jean Chrétien. You would think that was enough to do whatever this small clique of elitists wanted to do. But no, they accepted gifts from shady characters. Hopefully a new government will do what it can to provide Canadians with the truth about this organization. But colleagues, one thing is clear about Justin Trudeau. He is the Prime Minister who was found guilty of breaking the Conflict of Interest Act so many times that we have lost count. The Ethics Commissioner recommended that the Prime Minister and all of his cabinet receive a special refresher on what ethical conduct is and what is the code, what is in the code. Of course, those Liberals believe they are above the law. The rules are made for others, so they are they snub the Commissioner. Colleagues, I am nowhere near finished detailing the list of ethical breaches and misconduct committed by the Prime Minister his cabinet, and other party MPs. But even if I have unlimited time, I will stop here because I think you get the point. Oh, no. But I must point out that all these facts are known, all these facts are known because some journalists and the conservative opposition has worked tirelessly to find the truth. The Trudeau government has developed what the information commissioner called a culture of secrecy. Senators can have a glimpse of what this culture of secrecy is right here in the Senate when the government continually refuses to answer our questions that it deems inconvenient. And Canadians now call the NDP Liberal Coalition the costly cover-up coalition because the NDP will always join the Liberals to stop House committees to investigate Liberal Corruption. Here in the Senate, the Conservative opposition has managed, even though we are badly outnumbered, to shed some light on all that Liberal corruption. I suspect that it is because we have been so effective that the government is cooking up a scheme to unilaterally change the rules of the Senate to reduce the powers of the opposition. They are so tired of us digging up the truth, we have to do something. So, colleagues, Prepare for that, because that is what the leader of the government has indicated. We are going to take away the power of the opposition. We are going to take away the rights of the opposition. We are going to give the rights that you have to people who stand for nothing. Conservatives stand and support six million voters that voted for them in the last election. And we will continue to do our job. Justin Trudeau will be remembered as the Prime Minister who broke the code of ethics several times. He will be remembered for leading a government that considered ethic rules as mere suggestions that could be discarded in pursuit of what they thought was the greater good. Let me quote the Prime Minister again. This is what the Prime Minister said. It really sucks right now. Like everything sucks for people, even in Canada. We're supposed to be polite and nice, but man, people are mad. End of quote. That is what Trudeau said in New York last fall. Yes, Prime Minister, people are mad. They are mad at your complete disregard for rules. They are mad at your audacity to lecture us at the same time. They are mad at your virtue signaling that gives you a free pass on ethics. Justin Trudeau, you are not worth the cost. Harry Truman had a sign on his desk when he was President of the United States, and it said, the buck stops here. Colleagues, Justin Trudeau is no Harry Truman. He is trying to put blame on everybody and everything else. The liberals will deflect, obfuscate, and lie to cover up their ethical lapses.
That also makes Canadians mad. Justin Trudeau will soon leave his role as Prime Minister, either because he may finally do the right thing and step down, or because Canadians will vote him out of office. One thing is sure, these scandals will be part of his legacy. Canadians will turn to Pierre Polyev and the common sense Conservatives to bring back integrity and ethics to this government and to our country. Colleagues, I invite, or I intend, to cover more of what Justin Trudeau's legacy will be all about. So with that, I will move the adjournment of the debate for the balance of my time. Thank you, colleagues.